The word of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful forever, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sid Kenu, to the highest, the only righteous Lord of our God who deals with his righteousness in the holiness of his truth. And peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone, in Christ alone, not wagging their tiles in the terms of their human reasoning, in the terms of their human works to be saved but simply by an act of faith, believing upon my Lord. <laughs> they shall be saved and they shall have a great peace towards the life of the calling in which they have been chosen in the Lord. If at all they have been born according to the will of God the Father in heaven, not according to the will of the flesh, neither according to the will of the blood. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath, after believing in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, to be constantly under the Pleroma status quo. What a privilege it is for us. The Pleroma status quo is ours in this church age. That's what the word is all about, to be filled with the Spirit. And the word which certainly teaches for us to be filled with the Spirit. And to be filled with the Spirit demands that we should keep a clear account with the Lord. The Pleroma status quo for which you and I have been chosen in this church age, fulfilling each and everything, that we are no longer to be tossed to and fro by every slight of doctrine, but to test every spirit as 1 John 4 says for us, and to make into our mind that our Lord our God has not come to condemn the world, but to save the world by His grace. And those who are already been saved by faith alone in Christ alone could walk breath by breath, not allowing their moments of time in the Kairos, Kairos process of time for which we have been said, Kairos, living every moment unheeded, but to make their mind to understand in this Kairos moments of the chronological time given to us. Though we don't find a convenience, but the necessity has been laid down upon us, the task at hand. So that, though the time provides good convenient opportunity or not, we need to be controlled of the Spirit. So this great Kairos moment to be fulfilled in our lives, which in eternity past being designed for us to grow up in the grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and to understand what it is to preach and to explain fully the Pleroma status quo. And this church age being called as the Pleroma Polytema Privileged. Pleroma of Ephesians 123, Christ in all in all, who is in midst of us, given us the gifts to us to exemplify the church through his teaching of word. And in fact, indeed, tabernacling in us through the Spirit, enveloping every believer to be called as an outcalled one for his glory. And the polytema word refers to the heavenly things, because we are no longer the earthly things. And for that reason, before the foundation of the world, we have been told to be holy and blameless, chosen in Christ. To the praise of his glory in his grace of the same Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. And this church age is a pleromo, polytema, privileged one. 
and those who love to walk in such walk great goodness and goodwill to them breath by breath realizing and waking up to the danger of their position and to be attentive enough a guy row and to wake up to such standards not being drowsed but to realize from the dead works to get out so that Christ our Lord our God could illuminate them that's what the process is all about great goodness and good will to them who love to walk in the cherishing and the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath and when we are walking so we will not fulfill the desires of the lustful patterns of the flesh by the time in your ignorance not to know the right word and for that reason you think filling of the spirit is gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues for that you mean though now we have in the completed canon scripture the post canon period not the pre canon period of this church age the spiritual gifts which are permanent but yet the people believe they are in the temporary terms and they love to take in the terms of miracles and healings <laughs> what a sad part it is when we look in the youtube the ministers in and around the world certainly deceiving the innocent flock making them to respond to lies rather than truth leading them causing them and certainly like a prey tearing them apart not even able to make up to realize that they have a true spiritual life in Christ and whenever we look such things it pierces our heart that this innocent flock for which they have been called not to be drunk in wine when apostle paul mentions the word wine i know he meant to say the cosmos thinking where with he tells applying the scripture in the past for us in the present to realize the failures of them so that we could be corrected likewise in the future of the tribulation revelation chapter 14 verse 8 the word of the lord of god says for us satan has caused all the nations to drunk the wine of its intoxication jeremiah 51:7 the same thing but there is only one prophet who said the same jeremiah he called him to make to drink the nations the wrath of the lord of god diminishing not a word and he did it and is rightly called a weeping prophet when he realizes how and what was the real position of israel the chosen one for the lord describing his pain in lamentations and calling to us if the lord of a god could certainly make a target to take wrath upon the nations how it would be how well settled they are in the crisis of their giblets and though you are a pleasure and one to the lord says colossians to uh, lamentations to seven the pain in our heart which teaches to us for you day by day though you are a pleasured one privileged one chosen one and if you are not walking according to the truth by realizing to know who is your master to know who is your lord and yet having innocence in your mind to think you are innocent enough and could be excused no germia in fact indeed made all the nations to drink and he says very specifically i made them to drink the cup of the wrath of the lord upon them here being filled with wine making you all to drink the cosmos thinking of this world intoxicating your thoughts making you to lose the faculties of your behavior the faculties of your thinking 
and by that we mean what no renovation standards of your thinking but yet being abiding in the lustful patterns of the world's thinking and that's what he says very specifically it is intoxicating and if it is intoxicating you're losing the faculties of your thought and that's what wine is all about referring back in revolution 14.8, the same thing in Jeremiah 51.7, for us to understand how Satan causes you to drink the false doctrines of this earth. How it blinds your mind not to realize that we are in the post-canon period of this church age and the permanency of the spiritual gifts of Ephesians 1.23 mentioned in Ephesians 4, 8 and 9. Prophets who have done their work, apostles who have done their work, but now we have evangelists and the pastor teachers. Evangelists are doing their work to get believe, unbelievers to know Christ. But the main problem with us is, dear brethren, since we are not able to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, and to witness the truth, every believer has been called under the ministry of reconciliation, says 2 Corinthians 5, the ministry of ambassadorship. And here it's not about the only evangelical work, what they can do. The same thing mentioned for us in Ephesians 4, 11 through following. Everyone has a part of a role to do for the church. And what is the best part? Your works to speak more or your actions speak louder than your words. That's what we find in Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 14. The three men of God. Noah, Antidevilian. And the present time it was Daniel during that period of his era when Ezekiel writes being a contemporary to Daniel. And Job was first earlier after the book of Genesis or prior to the time of the book of Genesis. What spoke in them? Because of their righteousness they shall be saved, not their sons and daughters, says the scripture. And why I am telling this to you all because every believer is an ambassador to Christ so that they can wake up. How our lives are really speaking about the righteousness of Christ. Noah, a preacher of righteousness for 120 years, what did he speak? His work spoke. Constructing according to the word of the Lord of our God. The given dimensions of Noah's art. And the people might have thought what a madman is. People might have thought, though he is preaching 120 years, why the people couldn't believe. There were no converts, so what? He went along to do Lord's will. So the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, seemed fit to write about Noah. And then the order would have been like Job, Noah, and Daniel. But the exact word which has been used, the very next man is Daniel, and then follows Job. Between the two extreme periods of the antediluvian time, the word of the Lord of God teaches to us. Even in the present time, it's Daniel in the present time after the completion of their Old Testament canon of the law and giving a warning through the prophets, he tells to them, even in the present time, it's the same righteousness that has to speak through your lives. It is the same standards of righteousness through your works which have to speak out about Christ. And then he compares now to Daniel. And then he tells even in the present time, it is the righteousness of his works. What did Daniel do? We have a great figurative works of Lord made, being made through Daniel from Daniel chapter 1 till to Daniel chapter 6. What a great privilege it is. Followed by his even fellow believers who have been there with him constantly, obeying to do only Lord's will. Though it may be death, they did not care. When we read in Daniel chapter 3, we find that. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abagnado. When we read in Daniel chapter 2, because of the obedience what he took to the Lord, I shall not defile myself. Just give us 10 days of trial. And Lord our God certainly blessed the bold faith of Daniel. That's what his work is all about. Noah's work was to construct the big ship or boat or ark, whatever it could be in your language. And furthermore, he proved that he was a preacher of righteousness in spite of building that boat. And what was the righteousness? 
we find that in Job again. Have you seen my servant Avad? The same thing of Isaiah 54, 17. Because my servant will have my righteousness. And further he tells, because my servant will have my righteousness, I am their inheritance, and no open that is formed against thee shall certainly prosper. And what we find in Noah, the righteousness of the Lord, obeying his will. And being given for him a mandate, walk before me and be perfect like Abraham. Daniel, at least, he was being called a greatly beloved. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, and he tells the details of the archangel Michael, who was there at the time of the Persian War, and certainly coming there to help him to make known about his people the 70 weeks. And where till now the people are not able to understand before the first advent and the second advent of Christ our Lord, our God, how it is the church is being put in as a sandwich between the both advents. And furthermore, taking for us to understand between these two advents how the church age begins on the day of Pentecost. And how, while writing in the mystery epistles of this church age, Apostle Paul pens for us in Ephesians 1 to teach Christ all in all, the Pleroma status quo. A Pleroma status quo for a believer being called to be filled with the Spirit or controlled with the Spirit, a quality that never existed earlier. Therefore, we have been told kine ketesos, spiritual spaces in Christ. Not neos, but kine, new of a kind that never existed earlier. Neos, new of a kind that existed earlier, but with some change. So we have been told very specifically, we are kine ketesos, and we have been told in Ezekiel 14 to look upon the righteousness of them. And what is the righteousness? Their words were not just literal, but their words spoke the righteousness of Christ. Today as well, the same thing, every ambassador in the Lord. His works have to speak. Not only doing just the work of an evangelical realm for the person who has been given this bona fide gift of evangelism, evangelistas, good news. But it is the work for every individual believer. By default, they have been made to be an ambassador to the Lord. By default, they have been made to be the missionary in return when they grow up to become ambassadorship. But in return, the default thing, what another has been given, it is nothing but the privacy of priesthood. These both things by default to every believer in Christ. So that they cannot waste the time. So Daniel speaks about, in Daniel 11, 10, 12, by the witness of the Lord to say, My greatly beloved... And he tells what is his work, his work in Daniel 6.23 to say, My innocence was been found in the presence of the Lord, therefore he sent his angels and shut the mouth of the lions. And you can see the counterpart of them who were trying to accuse Daniel. The sooner they were been put, even their bones were been broken into rattling sound. The lions were so hungry enough to eat them. So how did the righteousness of Daniel be spoken of? In Daniel chapter 1 he tells, the bold step of faith in our lives as well. If we don't take a bold step of faith to discriminate between righteousness and unrighteousness on this earth, to make it to understand a great work in the law of our God to realize what is that righteousness we are dealing about all. We have been called to be like the sons of God. We have been given the power to become the child of Christ. And if we are a child of Christ, then we are not an enemy for righteousness of the Lord. Only the child of devil will be an enemy of righteousness. And if we are in Christ, he requires 100% perfection. And by that 100% perfection, I mean that you have to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, cleansing the garbage that is there in your soul, or in simple terms, the wine that intoxicates you, and the wine which Satan is causing through Babylon to drink to all the nations. The standards of false doctrines. And that's what it is all about, dear brethren. It's just nothing but causing you to become not aware about the dreadful judgments of Lord God Almighty upon sinners. That's what we find in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 causing us to understand. Be aware, Blapato. Be aware to the warning. 
and how most straight or most exact or acribos what are the demands of the word of the Lord of our God and you be walking in it and not as fools but as a wise man like that we mean as a wise man of a watchman who has been given for him to understand that we cannot be equally yoked with unbelievers we have to be separated from unbelievers thinking satan has caused them to drink the wine and that's the pain what apostle paul writes in ephesians chapter 5 as we are come, as we are covering our series on ephesians chapter 5 and daniel proved his work as bold step of faith and lot of a god rewarded him given him more wisdom and knowledge so that he can tell the dream of a man who lost the mind to tell what was the dream and he was been there at a point of execution those who have been called as sorcerers or wisdom men who were at the point of execution but lot of a god but lot of a god revealed the dream to prove how great he is that's the righteous thing. Before that, what did he do? He put into his practical life not to eat the food that has been exposed to idols. And it should be really a great challenge to say to the man on that time who was a monarch. And the king's table food, no one could say no. The king's table wine, no one could say no. But on a trial, he says, give me ten days of time. That bold step of faith, like Noah building the ark for 120 years and telling them what is the truth that the people did not believe. In that bold step of faith, the food that has not been defiled when Daniel and his fellow colleagues are taking it, people might have thought that's only a sorrels and pulses in it. How can he certainly grow up? It's not in the food that matters, dear brother, and it's what in the glory of the Lord that really matters. Not out cerals and pulses may not give you that food of energy in you. Therefore, many people may go on to eat non veg and they think they can get good energy and strength. No, but Christ our Lord our God is our strength, says Second Samuel twenty two thirty three. He is our way, the one who makes our way perfect. He is our strength and he is our valor, he is our vigor. To honor Lord's word, whatever manner of step you take, it is Christ our Lord, our God, who is going to make your physical body also to be glorified. He is going to see with that valor and vigor that has been given to you when you certainly think he alone is our fear and he alone is our dread. To the highest and to the greatest privilege, what you and I have been given in this church age, dear brethren, after the ten days of trial, they were more fairer in wisdom and in knowledge and God honored them above the remaining men who were like aristocrats, who were well learned. And they should be the next men to take over Babylon. And Daniel was being taken to the point to become a prime minister of that country. What a blessing it would be. Lord of God did not certainly only exemplify in their flesh, but also exemplified them in their position as well. That's what righteousness, Ezekiel 14, records for our admonition to learn. This men who were in the past dispensation, and this men did not have constantly the enlightening ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in them. But they were having the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in them. But in this church age, every ordinary believer says, Christ our Lord, our God, the one who has been born in this kingdom, comparing to John's witness, he tells. No one in the Old Testament is greater than John the Baptist, but the one who has been born in this kingdom of Christ, in the reigning ministry of the Lord of our God on this earth. And by that we mean through the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. We are not talking about the millennium rule, the literal presence of Lord of our God coming with his bride followed by myriads of saints entering into this millennium rule of the Lord. And those who have been faithful giving for some five cities, for some ten cities, those who have been beheaded and martyred for the right word of the Lord of our God. You are not talking about that kingdom, you are talking about the present kingdom of this church age, the plural, more poverty, more privileged church age. And what is happening over here? And every believer has been given Though he is the least, 
because he's been given the highest and the loftiest, completely all in all filled, politima, heavenly citizenship. And even that who is a least, Bible doctrine is very specific, dear brethren. It says for us, even that, that which is least, even if you are being born in this Christ kingdom, and by that we mean Ephesians 1, 4 being fulfilled in your lives, followed by John 1, 12. Even you have been given the greatest work to be done as a greatest witness than those three men mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 14. And what is that? The enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because you are now the temple of the Lord of our God. And brother by brother, you survive in that ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. A breath by breath ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Even when you are the least in this kingdom, you are being called to be superior, to be far above, to be greater. And you are being called greater than John the Baptist, the one who was a king like among all the prophets of the Old Testament. Christ of our Lord of God himself exemplifies for you to tell that the one who has been born in this kingdom of God is far superior, is far greater and is far higher than John the Baptist. Because you have been given the greatest and the highest and the loftiest and the holiest. And we can do better than Ezekiel, what he has been mentioning for us in chapter 14 about Noah, Daniel, and Job. But where are our works? Where are the works of our divine good, Agathosune? Where is the work of the fruit of the light of the Spirit mentioned in Ephesians 5, 9? And wherewith you have been told, if you are having your trichotomous nature, being after believing in Christ, your new created spirit requires nothing but aletheia, the truth. Your soul requires now nothing but the righteousness of Christ, not the righteousness of this earth. And your outward appearance will certainly have your body mannerism is nothing but agathesune, divine good. Constantly waiting to correct and to know whenever a thought that goes against the mind of Christ. That's what we find in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. When our obedience is ready, then we can get back all mannerism of disobedience in their lives. We can pull down them. And when our obedience is ready, getting every thought into captivity for Christ, we will be waiting for the deeds of Agathe Sune, which is nothing but constant having a zeal for goodness and truth, rebuking, correcting and chastising them. And that is what how we are going to do it with a sharp sharpness. And we don't spare, no matter however it is, whoever it is. But in return, we go to tell to this world, not criticizing, judging the fellow believers, but making them to get out, not to be as a false. Pastors, or they call themselves today jackassly as apostles or false prophets. <laughs> really, dear brethren, how sad it is that we look that this man ignore the real importance of the right word of the Lord of God from the original languages of the scriptures. This man who don't understand what it is to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to proper exegeomai, John 1.18. This man who think weekly once is enough for us for the church and forget the daily renovation of the standards of the thinking. In fact, indeed, Bible recognizes day and night Bible recognizes breath by breath to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then where is the time for you to go and to think specifically only one hour in a day that you have to give to the Lord? But learning from the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher demands that you give your time, morning one hour, evening one hour, depending upon the circumstances of your place. And by that in fact indeed we mean learning the right word is more important than anything else on this earth. If not, you cannot have the Tagata Sune in your flesh. You cannot show forth the divine goodness of Christ, our Lord, in your flesh. You will be a joint fellow helper to lies. You cannot oppose. And do you know what they say? Fulfilling Psalm 104, blessed are the servants of the Lord our God 
who do the will of God the Father in heaven and they say every knucklehead who comes in the name of Christ by taking the name of the Lord upon their tongue they think they are really being bona fide gifted by the heaven but you shall know them by their deeds says the scripture not the deeds of this man witnessing you that I have purchased oil, I have purchased kerchiefs, these are the men. In fact, even mentioned in Isaiah chapter 37 or 36, with the arm holes they make you to sleep. This long, long away business was being done in the book of the time of, of Isaiah in BC 700. The same thing is repeating again. The same thing Satan is causing you all to drink the wine of its wrath because of his character of ponorias. And the word character of ponorias, what we have read, it has been destroyed. Therefore, it wants you all, even you, to be destroyed by ignoring the right word. Man's greatest weakness is what? To ignore the right word, to conquer not himself from the right word of the Lord of our God, striving over the mastery over his flesh. Man's own ignorance is what it takes care and it tells for you to ignore the right word of the Lord of our God and follow gimmicks. Yahweh's name itself is a gift of revelation. It's not a name for you to plan and to understand gimmicks. And idiotic morons certainly think causing them to witness. And you know what a sad part it is? They are witnessing that to unbelievers. And unbelievers listening to them, they go by faith to tell, okay, let me go and attend. Okay, let me go and give some money. But Bible doesn't recognize that. Unbelievers have been said to know Christ by the holy manner rock of your life, by becoming a great ambassador to Christ. If there are anything that are happening to unbelievers, they certainly change and they be in Christ. But when they follow their leader, their leader is not in accord to the terms of the mind of Christ. Certainly they depart. And in the meantime, what that man is doing over there, he's earning his money. People in the last time, says the scripture, will not endure sound Bible doctrine. They want a man who are going to give them an itching ear discourse which could please them, which could please the people who have called them. But they're not worried that they are answerable to Christ, not to this mere men who have only breath in their nostrils, to be more specific, who have only urine and excreta in their flesh all the time. And they want to fear this man. And Apostle Paul says, if I were here to please men, I wouldn't have been the bond slave of my Christ. Though Satan is causing every member of this human race not to believe in Christ, the failure on the part of us not to look by enlightening our eyes to see the harvest is full and the laborers are few. And by the time in every believer, if he doesn't wake up to become an ambassador to the Lord so that he can become a missionary for Christ, by using the privacy of his priesthood breath by breath and being in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to learn more about him and to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Then certainly Satan is winning you all to drink his wine. Then do you think Lord's hand is short in providing you a man like Jeremiah who made all the nations to drink the wrath of Christ? You are nothing short of all the privileges as Christ our Lord our God has walked, says the scripture, Colossians 2.6, followed by 1 John 2.6. We have none other short to compare James or Peter or John. We have Christ himself as our rule. The language what he spoke, Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 and 5, day by day, morning by morning, wakening up and wakening. And he was not rebellious to go to the word of the Lord of our God in spite of all the odd infinite circumstances. Do you know how much of treasure he might have had? Till he could be edified in the, in the mannerism of his 100% deity and humanity being put together in his hypostatic union. How much of, how much of treasure he might have gone through if he has taken 1,000 tons of load, he has put upon us only one ton of load to carry. And he says, my burden is easy, my yoke is light, come and carry it. 
And what is that? Daily edifying in the word of the Lord our God, breath by breath. Daily learning the mind of Christ, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. And that's what the word of Christ is very specific for us, to understand what is his will and to perform what is his doing. But what are we doing today in the churches, dear brethren? Men in this present dispensation, they do not even understand that they are far superior than Noah, Daniel and Job. So Daniel is a man who proves the bold step of faith, how a lot of God is going to reward them. Noah proved, though there were no converts except his family, to obey Lord's will is greater than the people who come with them or not. To allow the Lord's word to reign in them more great than the way how the people think. If we tell the truth, they may not get the money worrying about the softies. If we don't show them the power of miracles or healings, people will not believe. <laughs> Making these stupid idiots to see others also believe by their miracles or healings is nothing but satanic to the core. Diverting from their minds the true issues. A true miracle and a true healing is nothing but when you come and demonstrate according to the deeds of the word of the Lord of our God. You change to their minds the right innovation of the standards of the thinking. According to the divine viewpoint from human viewpoint and place in their minds what is the right word, right is, what is the right calling in Christ. That man will be like the way how we have read in Mark chapter 5, the man being caught up with all the legions of demons. In present Christendom as well, we are able to find in the times of Christ being filled with the demons in their minds, though Satan cannot touch them if they are true believers. But they have been influenced by the teachings of false doctrines. And by that we mean intoxicated in their mental faculties and their capabilities, which is wisely called in Ephesians 5.18, wine. And wine signifies communion in the intoxicating idolateries of mystic Babylon, signifies the dreadful judgments of Lord God Almighty upon sinners who reject the truth. Not the mere wine what the people are thinking to be, wine fermented of grapes. Though it may refer to a part not to be filled or not to be drunkards. Because time is short, you cannot waste your time in your exuberating jubilation. And that's what we find in Isaiah, Jeremiah 51, 7 telling that these are the men who have been made mad, halal. After drinking that wine, what did they become? They became mad, figuratively, in the spiritual terms, ignoring the right word of the Lord of our God. Satan causes them to drink and cause them to be halal, to be enlightened, and to be lightened up. And to think they can have the great praise and joy by that. Physically as well, when they drink such wine, you know very well, no need of explaining that. Like the way how Noah himself is an example for us. And that God, the Holy Spirit, records such failure on our part to understand. If we disobey the Lord's command, what it will be the result of it? And the descendants of Ham, who have been called as a cursed one through the Nagad process, what, what Ham did by going and telling to his brothers, and furthermore, salvation being planned by Sham, Christ of our Lord of our God through Israelites. And Japheth, through the Greeks, the written canon of scripture after translating it into Septuagint. And making this world to know about the scriptures. Yet now in the present terms we have the completed word in the original languages to go and read and dig and learn the truth. 
That's what the drunkenness will lead. But here we are talking about the spiritual drunkenness. What the mystic Babylon has done and caused them to become mad, says the translation of KJV. But in the Hebrew it is halal. It will cause you to have a great joy. It will cause you to be blinding, not to know the truth, but say this is life itself, the way how the false pastor teachers are reigning today in the pulpits by ignoring not to teach the word of the Lord of our God day by day. Word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, and breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's what half the people have become mad by drinking the wine of cosmos thinking. And every believer today, they have been taken care to have the legions of demands. And by the time in the doctrine, the false pastor teachers who love to do miracles and healings and tongues and make a woman to be having authority over the men. When the Bible says women cannot have authority over the men, these are the men who love not my Lord. They love their own flesh. They love their own belly as gods. Just for some pieces of bread, half or some handful of barley, they're going to exchange the truth to a lie. And professing wise, they are becoming fools. And Christ our Lord our God says, those who don't pass the examination of dokimas, they have been kept and given to reprobates as a dokimas. And dokimas is examination where the testing one who has kept his standards, and if you don't follow his standards, then certainly you are going to become a dokimas, rejected men, reprobates. And what is the dokimas in Christ for you as a believer in Christ? To be far more superior than Noah, than Daniel, than Job. To be far more superior than the man who has been there who said, Lord, I follow thee in the Gardeni incident. The legions of demand. But what Christ of Allah our God said, No, you cannot come with me. Go and tell. That's the right process for every believer in this church age. In the midst of this intensified stage of the angelic conflict being taken in the spiritual wickedness and in the terms of fiery darts of the wicked, you are more compared to the things pertaining to the legions of demons which were there with that man. You are far more greater pressured. Because at the movement of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, your positional sanctification tells that you are far more superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Your place is exalted in Christ. And Satan hates you on that. And since you have been exalted superior at the movement of salvation positionally, and you have to grow up to show forth your spiritual superiority in the living grace which has been given to you by reaching ultra super grace in Christ from the saving grace of the Lord of our God and by that you have been told day by day renovate the standards of your thinking that's what we find in 2 Peter 3 2 and 18 as well grow up in grace and in the full knowledge day by day grow up day by day learn day by day understand day by day realize what is the truth in Christ but what these men are doing today? If the pastor teacher should learn this word, then certainly they would make every believer to follow that word. You may think you can have your early business excuses before the presence of the Lord of our God that you do not know such and such things. But remember, dear brethren, what you sow that you will reap. If every believer is not able to be aware that he is not able to get sound Bible doctrine, at least, at least he has his concise. For whom? Wherewith he has to make clear in that concise. And therefore, First Corinthians 4, Apostle Paul writes for us, The conscience of us is clear as stewards of the mysteries of Christ, or the ministers of the mysteries of Christ, before men and before God. If the pastor teachers have that first, then certainly they will make every believer to have such concise. To realize that there is something after salvation that they have to walk in. And Satan still blinds the thinking. And the greater Satan blinds the thinking, the greater these men are being rejected. 
because they are not using their conscience to know whether it is the true word or not. What did the Bavarians do? In spite of Apostle Paul teaching them, they did not look in as blindly, but they went in at home and they searched, is it so in the Bible or not? At that time when Apostle Paul was teaching, he did not complete the New Testament canon so that they could understand what it was. They went and searched in the Old Testament. But Apostle Paul was teaching something new, the new revelation to this church age. But today's pastors, in fact, indeed, following the gimmicks to make the congregation as a prey to them, certainly they blind their eyes for some sort of temporary elevation of suffering. They blind their eyes to tell, come to my church seven weeks, five weeks, take this oil, <laughs> take these kerchiefs. Christ our Lord our God did not do such gimmicks. Neither it has been mentioned for us in the Bible about such gimmicks, except a place in Isaiah to represent about the kerchiefs, about the cloths what they sell. And in James talking about the oil, during that time coconut during that time the oil was being used as a medicinal purpose. And these people today, since we have the science and technology being developed, still they follow the same trends of oil. But your faith to wake up to realize that his word itself is our medicine to the flesh. But having believing to know that it's his word itself is a marrow to our bones, that his word itself is an eyesight to our eyes. And as sooner as you not realize about these things, the greater will be for you to be not even like Noah, Job, and Daniel. But you will be like the worst pagans of aliens who ever accepted or who have been ever on this earth without knowing the law of God. Daniel's righteousness spoke when he was looking in the terms to say, Lord, my innocence has been found upon thee. And the last man was Job in that order of the sequence of Ezekiel 14, 14. And the Bible doctrine is so specific for us to understand. The last man is about Job. What else we can say in Job 1, 8? Have you considered the Hebrew word sim tells to us, have you taken a thorough examination? Have you seen him in all the ways of his life when you cross-check? That's what the word consider means in the Hebrew. Have you thoroughly executed in all of your techniques and styles and methods? or in all of your strategy and tactics. There is none like him on this earth, the way how he is upright. And what the word says, my servant. Again, the word ever in the Hebrew, which I've already noted in one of our tapes. And ever are those men who have the righteousness of Lord God in them. And if every believer in Christ would wake up to realize that they are having the righteousness of Christ given to them to be shared so that none could come short of the glory of God after believing in Christ, but in return being baptized into that great one royal family of Yahweh Elohim through the bona fide ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, sharing to be called for the third title of our Lord of Lord, King of Kings, the church for his family. And if they would wake up, they have the righteousness of Christ in them being credited to their account at the moment of salvation. Then how true it would be on our behalf as well to be the servants of the Lord. 
and Christ our Lord our God exemplifies to tell have you seen my servant my pronoun calling for us apostles in us therefore Isaiah tells my holy one of Israel my Adonai Eloheinu says Ezekiel my Lord my God says Thomas can we tell he is my Lord if you have his righteousness in fact did every believer who believes in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone has that righteousness and furthermore enriching you in the responsibilities of his work calling you to take that burden of the Lord he causes you to baptize into the kingdom of Christ and we have been said in Galatians 3 26 and 27 everyone has been baptized into the baptism of Christ and by that we mean every believer in spite of being a male or female they have the burden to carry the cross to be the men like Simon the Cyrene and that's what the baptism of Christ is all about his cross he carried and anyone who could be his disciple daily they should carry his cross again the mentioning of the word hamaras daily day by day and how specific is it for us that we have been baptized into the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit at number one by faith alone in Christ alone number two baptizing us into the work of the glory of the Lord mentioning for us to understand what a truth it would be to realize as Christ our Lord our God took his cross so every believer have to take his cross and further mentioning in the epistles by Apostle Paul he tells I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer who I live but Christ who lives in me the same process for every believer in the Lord it is no longer we who live but Christ who lives in us and reigns in us but yet the people don't love to be baptized in Christ therefore faith alone in Christ alone giving you the natural life and furthermore carrying you to understand the blessedness of baptizing in Christ to take the responsibilities of him to grow up as to be spiritually men and not as babes and that's how you will be getting out from the traps of Satan how you have been taking care in the false doctrines of this man the men who haven't been sent by the Lord but they ran the men who come to serve the Lord saying in the name of the Lord making bellies as God in fact in it you believe it or not dear brethren the New Testament doesn't talk about the tithes and if you could say tithes are not there in this New Testament many people would fall out and if he could say for the second time as an example of Apostle Paul he served with his own hands and to tell us Christ our Lord our God says I come to serve you and not to be served I think many people will dare enough to take the place and the position of the pastor teachers the primary reason for us why these men are coming to the ministry is to just see to make money from that ministry not to honor Lord's word above his name that's the sad part and rightly Apostle Paul writes for us the way how Satan is causing them to drink their wine and making them mad halal and halal is the word for them to think they have been illuminated they have been enlightened they have been enriched they are having a joy they are having their exuberating ecstasy and considering what considering the techniques of satan as a standard of second corinthians 11 12 through 15 where apostle paul tells satan himself will transform into the angel of light and the word transform is metaschematizoa not able to change you in your inward action or from your inward thoughts from your inward life of Rima but just having a form of godliness without power in them says so 2nd Timothy 3 5 the same thing over here we find and how you can say 
that we are not under such influence by your deeds. You will be having the Agatha Sune, the divine good works, as James tells, without works your faith is dead. Without the works of righteousness, what Noah, Daniel, Job did, their works have been considered as dead. Or the faith has been considered as dead. Or the righteousness has been considered as dead. Their actions spoke louder. Noah by his ark. Daniel by a bold faith to say, give a trial of ten days. And in fact, even in the bold faith in Deuteronomy, in Daniel chapter 6, my innocence was been found in the presence of the Lord of God. In spite of the rule that has been passed, he went as usual kneeling in the presence of Christ before the towards the temple of Jerusalem and kneeling there and praying. Those great works are enough as a witness. And in fact, even coming to the servant Job, though his sons might have cursed the Lord, he did the work of giving sacrifice. And furthermore, exemplifying them in detail, he tells, though his own wife says, curse Lord and let him go. He says, no, don't talk like a foolish woman. He throws her out. A seven days of silence, a great silence in the history of the world. The three friends coming, taunting him to say, you have done secret sins because of such and such, because of such and such. And you know what was his work? Though he slays me, yet will I trust in him. Though I certainly perish in this flesh, I have an inner man wherewith I can see the Lord. Such are great incidences of the life of Job where many men don't understand how it is to work out. And put on Christ in Romans chapter 14 when we read, getting out the things of your flesh. The first example would be an example of Job chapter 24 how he was an example of putting on Christ. The one who was deaf, he became ear to him. The one who could not speak, he was a mouth unto them. And, it, and he gives a great detail of his description, how he certainly was a helpful in the works of righteousness, like the way how Christ was helpful to everyone for us on this earth. Such a great man being blessed again because of his absolute standard of faith not to go with his wife but rather obey the Lord and say, I am certainly, though he slays me, yet I will trust in him and I will not let go the integrity towards my God. And Job doesn't know what exactly is happening around, and that's the case with every believer's life. Because every believer now is a chosen vessel for Christ. Therefore, we have been called as Paltima, Pleroma, privileged believers with the terms of Kine, Ketesis, new spiritual species in Christ. And Satan knows very well if every believer would wake up to know the truth, the truth will not only set them free, but in return truth will cause them not to worry about Satan because the last enemy, the death, has been also destroyed by the Lord of our God and he has won over it. And Satan has nothing even to touch you when you walk according to the will of God the Father in heaven. And in spite of Satan transforming itself to become the angel of light, people would truly know by their deeds whether they are of God. And he tells them, do not get astonished when they themselves will transform to become the angel of light. And in today's Christendom pastors, you shall find them if they don't teach day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. They are not really sent by the Lord of a God. Because in the same chapter of 2 Corinthians 11, Apostle Paul writes, who will be the right pastor? And he gives all his sufferings. <laughs> and the greatest suffering would be for him and for me. The suffering among false brethren. What we are able to look today, many men don't understand what is the narrow gate. Better it is for us to be alone than to be in a company where they don't honor my Lord's word. Better for us to be isolated in the presence of the Lord of our God and to serve him 
rather than staying in the midst of the people who are false brethren. Who are these false brethren? Having an itching ear to hear, but not able to endure sound Bible doctrine. Like the crowds of the first three, where it fell upon the roadside, it was being choked up by the thorns, but did not fall upon the fertile land. The false brethren who don't love to honor my Lord's word above his name, then what is the point of us to take their offerings, to take food from them? When you dishonor my Lord's word, doesn't First Corinthians teach for us not even to sit equally and to eat with them? Those are fornicators, those are adulterers. Then how much more we should be to take this bold step of faith like Daniel, to be pure for the Lord of our God. Better for us to starve unto death rather than to take a fellowship with the false brethren. And why I'm saying this, if you're not able to wake up to get out from the wine, which is nothing but unsavedness will be the result in that. And what the word says in KJV, it says for you, Wherein is access? Access is nothing. Asotia or profligacy or profligate. And you know what is the meaning of profligate? Wasting of your resources. This great pleroma, politima, privileged resources. Though the men longed, like Moses, entire camp to be filled with the spirit except that 70 and then followed by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit of certain few less than 2%. Not every moron knucklehead who has a name of Christian upon his head has been given this privilege because they have been drunk in wine and what is that wine that is leading them? It is leading them to waste the grace of Lord of God in vain. And by that I mean even those denominational heads who are having their work to think that they are the great pastors, they are the great leaders. And if they don't come up to tell day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, in fact, indeed, they are also the Greek word called as asotia, A-S-O-T-I-A, which is nothing but an exact pattern of unbelievers. They walk unsavedness pattern, wasting the grace of the Lord of God in vain. And therefore, Apostle Paul alone writes for us, I have not labored in vain. The grace which has been given to me, much more I labor in that grace. And then he tells, I have not labored nor walked in vain. Why aren't there men like Jeremiah who to follow the paths of Christ saying, I have made the nations to drink the wrath of the Lord of our God today. You are greater than Jeremiah, you are greater than Ezekiel, you are greater than Daniel, you are greater than Noah, you are greater than Job. Because we have been rightly called to be the sons of God and Christ our Lord our God without even taking the examination of friendship, he calls you as friends. Can't you make these nations to drink the wrath of the Lord our God by telling the danger of their position where they are standing in the salvation of Christ? Can't you make them to agarro? Can't you make them to see? Can't you make them to tell what is the right purpose of you being kept alive in Christ? Redeeming the time, in spite of all being not convenient to look upon the right word of the Lord of our God, but for the task that has been laid down upon your burden of your shoulders, upon your soul, and upon your spirit, by the time you need to be the communicators of the right word of the Lord of our God, but yet you are not able to communicate the right words of Christ. And you're still desiring milk because you're unskilled in the righteous word of Christ. And the reason why we started these tapes in the YouTube, answering back these cults, in return realizing for you all to tell when we are prepared. If the pastor teachers don't prepare you day by day in the right work of Christ, no doubt your emotion will puff off. And as your emotion will puff off, 
you have just been taking as a gasoline till it has been there and once that gasoline is over you are going to stop there but you need to have something to take in to lead and to certainly end it in the point of Christ and that's what we call for you to renovate the standards of your thinking, 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 thinking. Christianity is all about thinking. Therefore, the rate of learning should exceed the rate of forgetting. And what is that thinking? We have the completed Bible from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. Go, take and look and read every word of it in the Hebrew or every word of it in the Greek and explain to the congregation and you don't require to suppress it or to certainly keep it away by the sheer words of your oracle preachings by telling this is parabole and giving you some short skits or short elimination points of that. And how do they do that? They want to fulfill it with the commentary notes. But every word of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic being meditated to know the Christian way of life in Christ. So that every believer could understand what is that great enforcing of explanation to be filled with the Spirit. And that is what you have to show forth to the world. How are you walking in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And how it is you have been filled with the Spirit as the scripture. Like the way how fish, fishes were been filled in the net, the perfume that spreads the room. That's what Pleroma status quo is all about. It's not gibberishly jumping along, dancing along, talking along in tongues. And leading the great congregation of Yahweh Elohim into once again under the care of Engastra Muthas Diman to control their vocal cords and to say they are gibberishly doing along with the Spirit of Christ. And that is what it is. Profligate. Profligacy. Using the grace of the Lord of our God in vain. Scripture says, by faith alone in Christ alone, you are being baptized into that great royal family of God, further given you to be baptized in the Spirit of Christ, to carry His work as He did, by daily taking to be His disciple, by carrying His cross, and far above being called for us to be far more superior than Noah, Daniel, and Job. And far more calling you all to be like Christ. You don't have anyone shorter than Christ to be walked in his paths. If you are in Christ, then you walk as Christ our Lord our God has walked. But what do these men do today? You know very well. It's a rhetorical question for you all to answer yourself. And the sad part when the pastors don't wake up, that they are still being made to drunk the wine of mystic Babylon to make them mad. Till that time, they don't wake up to be under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being controlled. They think their joy has been made for them to realize when they drink the wine by that time in the communion in the intoxicating idolatry methods of mystic Babylon during that time of the Old Testament. The same thing in the future of, me, of the tribulation and the same thing is happening today in the present of this church age. And how much they are intoxicating so that you can lose the control of your faculties and behave morons, infidels, clowns, behave like kleptes, lestes, mistotes, tupas, behave like canapes, tiflos, and us oriented minded pastors who are false. and showing to you a form of godliness, but no power of truth in them. A true miracle or a true healing is a one who has now learned the tracks and the paths of Christ. Because he has the burden of this ministry to go and share to the world. The burden that has been laid down upon his shoulders. What a great pain it would be that there are no men like Jeremiah in the present dispensation of this church age in spite of this pleroma, polytima privileged. 
with the highest and the loftiest one to tell that you are now the temple of the Lord of God, Trinity dwelling in you. What a sad part it is that there are no men like Jeremiah to make these nations to drink the wrath of the Lord. And by that we mean in the church age, grace upon grace, to make to people to understand what is their calling in Yahweh Elohim and to show forth a great sign of victory in Christ. Do you know what a great privilege it is for us when we get out, not to be drunk in wine, but walking in the Spirit, breath by breath, not only just being filled with the Spirit, controlled with the Spirit. How can we walk in the Spirit until and unless we live in the Spirit? And you are being called to be now in Christ, the temple of the Lord. The temple of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being purchased with a great price, therefore glorify Christ in your body. You are not of your own. How many days more you want to heed lies rather than truth? Have you at least read once Bible upon your entire life? Have you at least spent your time upon your knees to know, to write what is to be kingship in Christ? Have you at least known to become wise in the sense of Hebraism, so fame like a watchman used in Piscaf, Numbers 23.10, a high mountain, seven times the altar being built. Have you at least known in 2 Corinthians 6 not to be called yoked with unbelievers, then what is our kingship? And Deuteronomy 17.18 tells a king should write at least once the entire Bible. And we are in Christ now in the church age, kings and priests. And are we able to write the Bible at least once? Far less we read the Bible at least once upon your knees. The seven times altar mentioning for the first time in that inspired word you write, the second time in the interlinear, the third time you write in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and in the grace and the presence and the vigor and the valor and the strength of Christ as Daniel was being given that strength in the tenderest trial. It is not in the food that matters, it is in the food of Lord's word that really matters, your vigor and valor in Christ. And Lord of our God knows what food to feed you, like the way how Elijah was being fed a one meal for 40 days walk to the mountain. And Lord of our God knows what is that food we shall eat day by day in the grace of his presence. To write not only three times, but eight times, referring back to Psalm 119, the biggest chapter in the Bible, the wisdom word of chapter in the Bible. And every alphabet, eight verses, so we shall write at least eight times the entire Bible upon our knees in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. After the third time when you write, prior to that your foundation in the uninspired word, whichever language you go through, the second time you have to be in the interlinear and the third time you have to be in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And that's how we shall erect the pillars of a hard ebony of ivory task mentioned in Ezekiel 27.15. We shall erect. If the world erects for Satan so much, why can't we erect and make the people to drink the grace of the Lord of God? Rejecting that, upon sinners, the dreadful judgments of him that is wrath. Jeremiah did it, we the believers in Christ today ought to do it by showing forth a great mark of difference not to be equally yoked with unbelievers in this earth. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. Life is short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn that we are His servants. Our inner retents is none other but Christ. Our Nakalam is Christ. And the word Nakalam meant to say a joint possession of property passing down from one generation to another generation. The Spirit of the Lord of our God in the battle of Eon working through them now through us and again in the future of tribulation and then again in the millennium. That's what Havit is all about. The Nakalam. 
Only Christ our Lord our God is our Nakalam. And since we are his servants, we possess his righteousness to be far greater than the righteousness of Noah, Daniel, and Job. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In audibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my salvation. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dhamma Truma witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one Dhamma Truma witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Dhamma Truma witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, that her and the Holy will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with thee through thy word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms, so that sovereign Lord, the Lord, might be glorified. Challenge us by this message, O Lord, to be more righteous enough than the Old Testament saints, as you have said. Least in this kingdom is far greater than John the Baptist. Help us to realize that, and not to be drunk in wine, but in return, O Lord, to do, be controlled of the Spirit, in the highest and the greatest and the loftiest and the holiest privileges of Pleroma Polytuma in Christ, who is all in all. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen.